Jazzcast Pros. I need to create spaces for dopamine to happen for me to do the things that my brain tends to like reject. Like not fun, not enjoyable, not going to do that. No thanks. Like not enough dopamine. So how can I bring in dopamine in other ways so that I am pulled in to do the things? So I want you to think about when you pick up your favorite coffee mug and you take this warm sip of coffee or you're sitting down and you're just having like this really deep conversation with a friend or when you go into your favorite restaurant and what's the ambiance of it. And then we're going to transition into how you can build that into your business. And so today's episode is all about creating coziness into your business. Welcome to High Vibe Table Talks, the podcast to help you, the current or aspiring solopreneur, navigate the messy middle so you can make both an income and an impact. Hi, I'm Rashawn, and I love creating safe spaces for women to be courageous in their dreams. After spending a decade working in sales for a startup and talking with hundreds of other women entrepreneurs, I know it can be lonely, but you can do this. We are having impactful conversations with people walking similar paths to you, so pull up a seat. This is High Vibe Table Talks. And for the first time, I am currently live streaming this episode on to LinkedIn and YouTube. So I'm a little nervous, but here we go. We are back into school mode. The summer has calmed down. We're in this transition phase. So I wanted to talk about how you can build coziness into your business. I was kind of inspired on this topic by this person on TikTok that I follow, um, and she does cozy cardio. So I was inspired because she gets up in the morning and she gets like her favorite coffee mug and she lights her candles and she puts her treadmill in front of her TV and puts on like a comfort show that she wants to watch and she puts on cozy socks. So like she feels good. It looks good. It smells good all around her doing something that if she didn't have those things would be harder to do. And so she gets her, you know, 30 minutes of cardio in first thing in the morning, but not in the traditional way of like, oh, you have to go to a gym and it has to be in a sterile environment. And so, you know, I'm very much of the idea that you should build a business that supports your life that you enjoy living in, not managing your life around your business. And so I think this is a part of it. Why this fits into this season of when the woo wears off is because in the beginning of our business, when we're called to create something new, there's a lot of excitement. There's this like adrenaline and dopamine that is built in because we're excited and we just can't wait to keep going. And so some of the harder stuff feels easier because we're just naturally more motivated. When that woo stuff wears off, that's when it starts to feel hard. And so how can we build in buffers for ourselves that help prevent us from just being like dropping everything because we don't have that motivation, that excitement to keep going. And so that's where building in things that are cozy can help pull you in to do the things that don't necessarily like excite you every day, but are important. So how I wanted to kind of frame it too is because I was talking with my podcast producer um, earlier about this topic and she was like, you know, there's so many things that like I easily do for other people that I don't do for myself. So if you were going to set up a cozy little business for your best friend, what would you do? You know, I host a book club um, every so often and I'm all about like the ambiance and the coziness and how can I make sure everybody feels like really comfortable and like maybe it is like a little bit extra or a little bougie or a little whatever, but people enjoy themselves and they just feel like when they walk into your space, they're just getting a nice little hug from Mershon. So there are a couple ways that I build in coziness into my business that may help you build coziness into your business as well. 
The first one is physical and that's like the most obvious. So we'll kind of talk about that, but is your space cozy? So what I do is like I have, actually I have a picture that one of my friends like drew for me for my birthday a couple years ago. I have some quotes that feel really like inspiring. I have some handwritten um, notes that people have written me. I've printed out some like testimonials. Again, they just feel like this warm hug of people who like care about me and why I'm why I keep going. You know, I talk about in my episode about the vision board is that you want to keep that up where you can see it because it's going to be that little nudge of like when you have to sit down and cold call or you have to prospect or you have to send out a bunch of emails or anything that your mind creates friction around doing, they're just like little nudges of keep going, keep going, keep going. And so I have those, you know, I have pictures of my daughter and I have like just fun creative pieces that are surrounded by me. When I'm in a creative space, I want to, when I have things that other people have created around me, it makes me feel more creative. The second thing, and I struggle with this a lot, is a decluttered space. I believe that a cluttered space creates a cluttered mind. And as an entrepreneur, your to-do list is always a million miles long. And so when your brain feels really cluttered and then you look around your desk and that is really cluttered, it is a recipe for you getting up and going into the kitchen and unloading the dishwasher instead of doing the thing that you know is going to move the needle forward. And so a decluttered space is a cozy space. Um, I will not show you my desk right now because I'm. <laughs> it's not the tidiest at the moment, but the idea is that, you know, eliminate some clutter from your space. I have this really nice, actually, it's really funny. Um, I have this candle that I light and it's called Cozy Nights. So even my candle feels cozy. And I think that that is another way to cozy up your space. Having a chair that feels really comfortable, that feel like you want to like be in. If you have to have extra pillows to support your back or this elbow or whatever, um, having extra shelving so that you can put, you know, all the things that you need and just, yeah, creating a decluttered but cozy space. One of my favorite things to do is we have this really big wall in our living room. And when I have to do a lot of tedious work, I get my favorite like cozy blanket. I put on, especially in the winter when the snow is falling, it's just like my favorite space ever. I get my cozy blanket and I put on cozy socks and I sit with this little corner and I put on um, a comfort show and I just watch the snowfall as I like do, 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 do all of the tedious work. Okay, so that's physical space. Again, that one is relatively easy and straightforward. So next we're going to get into personally. How do you create a personally cozy space for you to show up to? What vibes do you have around you? And that can be like actual people. Maybe it is your your co-working space that you show up to. Are those people like cozy and just make you feel like, okay, I can do this. I run virtual co-working every Wednesday and I get so much done in that time because we just have this space of like, okay, we're here together, we're supporting each other, and we're getting things done. Maybe you don't have that in-person community yet. Join my co-working. It's very cozy. I think you'd love it. Um, but <laughs> you can build that in for yourself. And so in the morning, are you? what are you reading? What are you listening to? I try to only listen to like NPR uh, first podcast on the weekends because listening to political news first thing in the morning is not the cozy vibe I'm going for when I have to like get a bunch of stuff done. But I have a lineup of podcasts that make me feel inspired and motivated and excited. And so maybe you don't have those people in your life quite yet to create that for you, but you can build it in for yourself. There are a ton of Facebook groups out there um, that you can join that make 
you feel supported and inspired and connected. Um, again, books that you read is a very easy one to start off with. If you would like a list of some books that I read that get me in that headspace. Sorry, my dog is not being, he's uncomfortable and he's moving around a lot. Um, so if you hear background noise, that is what it is. He misses his person. My daughter went back to school and um, so he misses his person. So he's been very whiny. So right now he's at my feet. Okay. So personally, how do you create people around you that give you that cozy vibe? The next one is digitally. And this one can be something that gets away from us that we don't even realize gets away from us. I am really liking threads at the moment. I feel like that is a very cozy space. Like, again, I feel seen. I feel supported. I feel heard. I feel creative. I feel inspired. I feel like the people that are on threads just like get it. And so I'm going to enjoy spending time there. And so maybe after I okay, I'm going to send out 10 prospecting emails and then I'm going to sit and I'm just going to like peruse on threads for 15 minutes. And so that's a way to create coziness again around things that we don't necessarily love doing. What is the background of your computer? When you open up your computer, does it bring a smile to your face? Um, whether it is like a picture of your family or something, a trip that you went on or a motivational quote or Again, something that is going to make you feel creative, inspired, motivated. We talked about the clutteredness of your physical space. How cluttered is your space digitally? What does your desktop look like? Are there just like a million files because you're always like saving things to your desktop? Or does everything have a place? Does everything have a very organized feel to it? Again, do as I say, not as I do, because mine tends to get very cluttered. <laughs> but when I'm thinking, you know, again, we're getting into the season of fall, and so creating routines and space for yourself to organize, declutter, make something pretty is something maybe you want to put on your calendar over the next week or so. If you use something like Notion or Trello or Canva or any of these tools that help us to be productive and do things that, that we need to get done throughout the day, how do you feel when you get into those? How do you feel when you have to get to those? And I say that because it's like, okay, I have to get to my Trello. Okay, let me go to Trello.com. Oh, I got to sign in again. Okay, where is this? And like, maybe you have like, is, can you bookmark it so it's automatically on your desktop? Are things easily bookmarked so you know when you go to your bookmarks, this is exactly what I'm looking for? And like just creating coziness and ease and a lack of friction around the things that you need to get to digitally is a way to create coziness around them. But something that came to mind when I first was in sales was when I had to cold call. Again, something that like nobody enjoys doing. And I tend to go back to it because it's one of those like universal things where people are like, yeah, that is not fun. But when I first started doing it was in like the November time frame. And so a way to get myself pumped up is I would listen to Christmas music. It just would put me in this like really excited spirit, this mindset of like, we're going to do it. Let, let's figure this out. Let's see who answers. And so music is an easy way to bring coziness to your space. Again, this isn't like groundbreaking. You're not like, Marshawn, I never thought to put music on. But again, bringing attention to the things that you're surrounding yourself with is the point of this episode. And so I have a couple playlists that I really like using. So I have specific playlists for when I'm writing, when I need to be creative. I actually have a playlist called Back Deck Moody because in the summertime when I'm sitting on the back deck and I just want to like 
be all in my feels and like be reading or whatever. I have that playlist. Um, I take my Wednesday co-working playlist very seriously. So yeah, so like all the different playlists that I need for the mood that I'm in. Sometimes it can feel like frivolous or like, why do you need to have this pretty stuff to to do what you know you need to do? And like, I just want to take that judgment and that shame out of, well, I don't need something pretty to get something done. Like in the words of Donna, treat yourself. And so the idea is to just like treat yourself a little bit because this is a hustle. This is a grind. This entrepreneurship is not for the faint of heart. The other thing that I love to do is base my coffee mug choice on what I need to do for the day. So I have a very like cozy coffee mug that has a wide bottom. And when I just like want to feel inspired and creative, that's the one that I do. I have one that has like proceed as if Uh, success is inevitable. And it's like when I have to do like the hard stuff, the like the sales side of stuff, that's the one that I choose. When I want to like think and ponder, I'll pick the coffee mug that my brother-in-law gave me because he's very like deep and insightful. And so a, a good coffee mug or even like a good cup of coffee. There's a local coffee shop called Leaf and Bean and it's just like the best. And you walk in and you like are instantly hit with like, oh, this is leaving bean. And so when I make that coffee in my kitchen in the morning, I'm just like brought back to there. And I've had so many like amazing and intense and funny and beautiful conversations with friends and family in that coffee shop. So it brings me right back there. Okay. So Part of why I was inspired to do this episode is because I'm doing this kind of like deep dive into how can I have grace for my brain working the way that it does. And so there's this fine line of not getting like too caught in the cozy. Like for me, the point of this is I need to create spaces for dopamine to happen for me to do the things that my brain tends to like reject, like not fun, not enjoyable, not going to do that. No, thanks. Like not enough dopamine. So how can I bring in dopamine in other ways so that I am pulled in to do the things that my brain naturally rejects? And so that's kind of the like cozy aspect of it. Like I love sitting down and and smelling this candle. So I'm going to sit down and I'm going to smell this candle and it's going to be put me in the right mindset to pitch myself to be on podcasts. I'm going to show up to that co-working space because it's going to force me to sit down and get through my email um, and respond back to people. I'm going to put on this really great playlist and then do all my show notes for the next three weeks because they need to get done. The key is to not get lost in the things that feel good. So you may want to turn on a comfort show as your background noise. But the comfort show has to be one that you don't need to pay attention to or won't get drawn into. Like you already know what's going to happen. You can pretty much recite it. You don't want to get pulled into the drama of who the bachelorette picked for her final rose because that is not going to accomplish what we want to accomplish, which is I need to focus on getting something done, not like, oh my God, what, what happened? You know, in virtual co-working even, as a facilitator, I have to be very cognizant of like, we can get really wrapped up in this conversation about Harry Potter or Bridgerton, but that gets cut off at 1220 because we're here to do work. Don't use the blanket that feels so good you practically fall asleep, you know, and so don't create so much cozy that it has the opposite effect and pulls you away from doing what you need to do. Even like with threads, I have to set parameters around what time of day I'm on it, how long I'm on it. Thank you, Ashley, for telling me to turn off my not- my threads notification. I have had a couple posts that I've put up there that have gotten a lot of traction. And so the dopamine's like, ooh, who's responded? Ooh, who like this? Who, you know? And so I had to turn those off. I was telling Ashley from the Cheerbrarian, which is an amazing podcast. Go listen to it. I'll put it in the show notes. And she was like, we're on a call right now. Go to your settings and turn off notifications. And I was like, but my 
dopamine receptors really like this. <laughs> so you have to find that balance of like, this is a nice reward, but it's not pulling you out of, again, the point of all of this. Um, every time I say reward, it's like I go to that TikTok sound. It's like a reward. <sighs> Send me a message if you get that reference. Sometimes I feel like my whole day is just TikTok sounds bouncing around in my brain based on what I'm doing in that moment. Okay, so create some coziness in your business, whether that's the people around you, the sounds around you, your visual, you know, take some time to declutter your desktop. Again, don't look at mine. And don't you dare ask me how many tabs I have open and windows I have open right now, because that would be rude. So get yourself a nice cozy blanket that you sit down with. Take the energy from your mug that you need for that day. Pretend you're building a space that you want your best friend to build a business in. Because we have to be our biggest cheerleader in business. It's a grind. It's not easy. So get into your fall vibes. Get into your cozy vibes. And think about how to build coziness into your business. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. And remember that big dreams and small steps will transform your life.